The skeletal system is primarily made up of bones. In this video, we will discuss one way of classifying bones and the functions of some of the important bones of the human body. All the bones in the human body are divided into two categories. Uh, by the way, our bones are not blue and orange. Uh, I've just coded them that color so that we can understand these two categories. So the first category uh, in which we're going to put bones into is axial skeleton. And the second category is the appendicular skeleton appendicular skeleton. So these uh, two categories are uh, in some ways different from each other, which we will discuss. And this is the color coding that I followed. All the axial skeleton bones have been uh, marked in blue and the rest in orange. Okay, let's discuss the axial skeleton. Now the axial skeleton uh, is a set of bones that are all centered across this one single vertical line that I marked there. If you notice, all these bones don't go very far away from this, and they don't move far away from this line. So basically, they're all along the vertical axis of the body. And, and that's where they get the name axial from. Okay, so of the body. Yeah. So which bones are considered part of the axial skeleton? The skull is part of the axial skeleton. And then we have the backbone, or the vertebral column as we call it, and then the ribs. Okay. Let's get into each of these bones one by one. Let's start with the skull. So here's the skull. The skull is, let's write that down, skull. The skull's primary purpose is to protect the brain. So we have uh, these bones to protect the brain from any damage. There are precisely eight bones that do this job and they are called the cranium. Okay, next we go on to the 14 bones which are on the face. These bones that are on the face protect the skull as well, protect the brain as well, but uh, they have other roles as well. Let's see. They house the eyes, but they also have the upper jaw and the lower jaw. Now, these two uh, pieces of bone are very important for our chewing. The lower jaw moves up and down. That's what helps us to chew, and that's what helps us with talking as well. Now, apart from these very visible bones, there are three bones which you usually may miss out on and those are the three bones in the ear which are important for hearing okay so that's pretty much the idea of the skull now let's move to the next set of bones which are part of the axial skeleton and that's the vertebral column so here's the vertebral column now the vertebral column is just a fancy word for backbone most of us know it as the backbone let's look at a picture you might be wondering why there's a picture of wire when we're talking about the vertebral column. So uh, let's see why. This part of the wire, this is the part that carries signal, right? This is the part of the wire that carries our data or carries current. And this outer part is for protection. This is a protective sheath that merely just ensures that the wires that are carrying the signals don't get disturbed or don't get uh, harmed or cut, right? The vertebral column is very similar to this. Let's look at it. So this is the back of a human skeleton. And it's interesting to note that the brain controls the entire body through a similar wire that runs along the back. Now this wire takes signals from the brain and returns signal to the brain. So this is our communication line from the brain to the rest of the body. And this is very delicate, sensitive, and you cannot afford to have any damage. If it gets damaged, one can get paralyzed. It's that bad. So this spinal cord is where the wires, which are actually nerves, are present. This is enclosed by a set of bones that protect it. And that set of bones is the vertebral so this is how it looks. This is the vertebral column, uh, which is actually used to protect the spinal cord. Now, this is a set of 33 bones. And each of those bones, you can sit and count it if you'd like, but each of those bones are basically called vertebra. Now, these bones provide structure as well to the body. One cannot stand or sit without the backbone. Imagine um, standing up without your backbone it would be impossible, right? Yeah, so it helps us with uh, standing and sitting. Now let's move to the next category or next set of bones that are classified under the axial skeleton, and that's the ribs. So the rib cage is what we discuss next. 
if you uh, this is much easier to count if you sat and decided to count the number of ribs you would find that there are 12 pairs of ribs and so that's 24 bones let me let me just show you where these are so you can see that this is one bone and on this side we have another bone. Similarly, this is one bone, on the other side we have another bone. This is one and on the other side we have another one. If it's at to count them, you'd find that you would have 12 of them, 12 pairs. And so that's 24 bones. But that's not it. The rib cage has another flat bone. If you pay careful attention, there's a flat bone here. This flat bone is basically used to protect the chest. Okay, flat bone that protects the chest and it is called the sternum now the rib cage as such has the sole purpose of protecting things like the lungs the heart the a lot of vital organs are in that part of the body right so it protects the vital organs uh, that covers it okay so that was the axial skeleton the skull the vertebral column and the rib cage now let's go to the appendicular skeleton the appendicular skeleton, let's write it down, appendicular skeleton. Uh, the word appendicular comes from the word appendage. Now, appendage actually means limbs. Basically, our hands, our arms and our legs are our, our appendages. These help with walking. These can help with writing, holding stuff, carrying things, uh, and a range of uh, things that we do with our hands and legs. Uh, running, whatever you want, you can add to the list. Uh, but the important thing about all these bones is they're very movement focused right and all of them invariably move in some way or the other and that's possible because they have joints which allow that movement so the appendages actually help in moving that's it with the appendicular skeleton in this video we could discuss the structure of the axial skeleton and the appendicular skeleton and some of their functions